Well, welcome everybody to uh, this year's um, silver panel, silver silver award panel um, here on Zoom. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully, the next hour or so will will um, be informative for everybody, um, especially those of us who aren't silver medal winners and those of us who aspire to be silver medal winners. Um, I'd like to introduce our panelists for today, uh, Mark Ryder. He's the owner of Level 2 Audio, um, and throughout a professional career spanning more than 30 years, Mark has earned the distinction of being a go-to resource for sound design, audio production and commercials, and voice recording and mixing for corporate videos and documentary projects. For proof that his clients trust him with high-profile creative ventures, look no further than the shelves in his state-of-the-art Level 2 audio, audio studio. Mark can pan his camera around his studio as I speak. You'll find evidence of a broad-based peer recognition in the form of silver microphone, communicator, and Addy Awards, including several gold awards, as well as a coveted national silver Addy Award for sound design. Mark has produced high-impact audio and recorded vocal tracks for an impressive list of local and national groups. This list stands as a who's who of civic, government, higher education, advertising and marketing, professional sports, the arts, and corporate organizations. Mark's work has been a part of projects with Owens Corning, the LeBron James Family Foundation, Illinois Institute of Technology, the Home Shopping Network, Bowling Green State University, University of Toledo, NPR, Libby Glass, the Toledo Zoo, Purdue, and Owens, Illinois. They and many others have benefited from the audio innovation, partnership insight, and creativity of Mark Ryder. Very nice. Thank you Next so Next up is... Go ahead. Next up is Bill Sattler. He's a founding partner and interactive print creative director at Madhouse. Bill graduated from Kent State University with a degree in visual communication design and has expanded his capabilities beyond a traditional print illustration background. Raised and ingrained with an entrepreneurial blue collar work ethic, Bill appreciates a hard day's work and the satisfaction it brings when a project comes to life. Results driven, not process obsessed. Push the boundaries of traditional design and get it done on time and on budget. That's Bill's mantra and something he tries to impart on all his team members. And finally, there's Scott Gregory, who is the chief creative officer for the Mad Avenue Group. He's been with the agency for 28 years, which is why he looks so tired. After winning last year's silver medal award, he was able to monetize the honor when he became the spokesman for silver medal plungers on the division of PepsiCo. And Scott is also a copywriter, a voiceover talent, a producer, director, and a big fan of carbohydrates. Aren't we all? And I, Scott, I've got a, a, a hard stop in five minutes, so. If okay, all right. Well, we'll, 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 you're, you're going right now then. So, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, the first question is for you, Scott. Actually, um, can you share any of your stories and insights and what led you to where you are today? And what was your response uh, when you won the silver medal, when you knew you, you had been chosen for silver medal award? Uh, as far as what uh, led me to where I am today, I, I, uh, I followed the smell of the money, of course. Uh, I grew up uh, dreaming about a career in radio and I was able to work in that world for about 12 years. And then when I transitioned uh, out of radio into marketing because they said, hey, we'd like you out of radio now. Uh, it was a pretty easy change, actually, because I got to apply a lot of the, a lot of the same skills that I used in radio from uh, uh, copywriting and voiceover and production, working with clients, developing ad content, that sort of thing. So uh, I've been doing that here at Mad App Group for 28 years now. Wow. Oh, in terms um, of my, re my response, I'm sorry, to, uh, yeah. to winning the, uh, the Silver Medal Award, I was... Um, uh, fair to say, I was, I was uh, completely surprised by this announcement. And so I walked around in kind of a dopey stupor for a few days. And uh, uh, I, I hit my head a couple of times, you know, and I had to submit to the AAF Toledo's uh, concussion protocol for a while. But I, I was told that I had won this award in, in January of 2021. So we had a full couple of months to, uh, to think about it, put the video together. And that was a, a wonderfully fun process. Uh, and then after uh, it was announced at the virtual Addy ceremony in March, uh, so many people were, were kind enough to reach out and say congratulations. And I was uh, really touched by 
the, all the nice comments. The whole thing has been such a positive experience. Uh, I couldn't be more thankful for it. Um, I learned that there are many benefits to winning the silver medal award. For instance, I'm not legally required to stop at red lights anymore, which is nice. Uh, every third beverage at area Burger King locations, free. And of course, the new vacation house is lovely. So thank you guys for that. And that's about it. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Bill, Mark, anything uh, new and exciting uh, that's happened with you guys since the, you were on the panel last year? Outside of another round of COVID-related uh, I haven't, I haven't been to the vacation house. Um, that's a that's a new one to me. I didn't know that was available. Yeah, that's good. I'll look forward to that too. But uh, yeah, for, for me, uh, no, nothing, nothing really, Scott. Unfortunately, um, I'm just hanging in there, still here. So uh, that's yeah. uh, that's good news in itself. We've got some new uh, employees this year as. You know, with with normal churn uh, and the great resignation, we've had um, we've had some opportunities to meet some new creative people. That's been pretty exciting this year. Did that? Did, did you find that that affected you guys at all? That when you mentioned the great resignation, did you lose some who just decided to move on, or? Um... Yeah, we had. I mean, we had a we had. A, a couple situations where you know there were some uh better opportunities across the country that came up for a couple of people that you know i don't know would have, would have as easily if we weren't all working from home and um, right. you know it's it's something that um is a decision that is made that if it's if it's good for somebody you know i totally get it um but you know we've also had uh a lot of our, our staff stay and, and just really grow with us this, this year and the last. So mm -hmm. I think some industries are hit a lot harder than we have been. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that kind of leads into the, into this question and Mark, I kind of want to throw it to you because as being, being kind of a, a one man band without, you know, kind of the, the support of a larger group like Scott or Bill have, um, how you been? How have you been navigating the, the, the last two years? Um, have you seen any changes in the the uh, I guess the audio industry at all? I mean, I know a lot of a lot of the stuff you do, um, you can do through ISDN lines and all of that as well, remote. But um, which was kind of always a, a thing with audio. But um, what have you what have, what have you seen over the last couple of years? Well, I think for uh, for me, like you said, because I do work alone and um, my studio, even though it's 10 or 15 miles away from my home, is really just an extension of my home. So even when, uh, you know, we had full shutdown, um, you know, almost a couple of years ago, um, I was still able to come in and, and there was still work to be done. You know, even at that time, there was still, I had a guy that needed to record a book and and we did little things or repurposed some things during that the big shutdown. But so really, even after that time, as things started to get back going, uh, it didn't change too, too much for me because, again, this was just like being at home for me. Now, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the ISDN lines and things like that. That is one thing that the pandemic did change. That, uh, that technology had always been around since the mid nineties. And what he's talking about is us being able to access talent uh, from around the country, uh, voice talent, as if they were sitting here in the studio with me and you would never know. Uh, it was that type of quality. The internet, uh, so we did that via phone lines. The, the internet was always kind of an option and always getting better and better and better, but people didn't jump to that new technology until uh, last year or the year before. Um, it was like that, that's what kind of said, okay, you're done with this old technology because everybody was sticking by it because you could trust it. And then um, when this came and people started doing more work uh, remotely via the internet and broadband and stuff like that, uh, the recording uh, became much better. So 
that was one thing that did change. Uh, you know, there, there are different processes to do that now, but it's, even, it's opened up even more people. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing at this point. Cool. What about, what about um, Scott or, or Bill? What have you, I mean, um, have you uh, had specific challenges, you know, as kind of a, of a larger agencies um, over the last couple of years? Uh, I, I can jump in. Uh, uh, we made changes early on, I think, uh, but basically that, that involved tightening up a little bit and just uh, trying to keep moving forward. Uh, and over the last year, we've had probably the biggest growth spurt in our company's history. We've been around for 32 years, I think, and our staff has grown by about 25% in the last year alone. And we're still hiring for new positions wow. that we've had to create because of client demand so it's it's uh, uh, it's been nice to uh coming out of this last two years or still maybe who knows we maybe we're in the middle of it still but it's it's nice to know that the model we built you know back in the late 80s and the cultural foundation that we've got in place has been has been very strong and it's it's been serving us well cool. I think most of our most of the change came in in 2020 for us. I mean, I would I would assume that is where it came from most people. I think 2021 was a situation where we were just getting better at the at those changes, at working more efficiently. And you know, I guess I'm kind of old school. Well, I am very old school, but I feel like um, presenting to clients and having that interaction with clients is something that I feel is important. So getting getting better at doing this type of thing and, and doing things digitally um, and getting good feedback and being honest, getting honest feedback from clients and getting reactions um, and just our presentation skills and materials and things like that. I think that's gotten better this year, but most of it started you know, right away in 2020. Uh, I think you're muted. <laughs> Scott. Scott. You're muted. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. I had to you're mute fine. myself for a second. You're fine. Um, sorry about that. Um, using some three words of brief statements, can you guys describe what led your success and um, maybe expand upon um, those brief statements um, if, if, you, if you're willing or want to? And I open this up to, to anybody who wants to dive in. Three words, is that enough? I don't know. Yeah, I have, uh, I had three. Uh, mine have to do with uh, customer service, but my the three words would be uh, solve, <clears throat> solve people's problems. And I think if you learn how to do that, no matter what you do and, you know, what kind of service you're doing or who you're working for, uh, if you can solve their problems, people will uh, come back to you. I uh, started out when I was in college, I worked as a teller at a, at a bank for, uh, you know, two or three years and, you know, learned how to do dumb stuff like answer the phone correctly or, and especially dealt with people who would come into the bank who had problems. They weren't happy about something. So you had to learn how to take, take care of those problems for them. And that really, once I got into audio or just doing my own thing, uh, you know, transferring that over to uh, that and just taking that mantra that much farther and, and solving people's problems, helping people out, they'll, people come back to you no matter what you do. Mark also learned the valuable skill of money laundering while working in the bank. So yep. nice work, Mark. That's coming handy. I know a lot for you. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. I, I, uh, I think the first uh, idea for, uh, I'll frame this in the, uh, from a creative standpoint, uh, and that's the idea of paying attention to other uh, advertising and marketing content uh, so you can learn from it, uh, good or bad. I tell my kids all the time, you can learn so much from all the bad stuff out there, whatever field you're, you're talking about, but learn how to analyze that content, learn how to break it down into its strengths, its weaknesses, and then apply the, the essence of that, that, that best work 
to your own stuff. And that never means that you copy or that you're trying to be derivative of anybody, but you want to define what it is that works for you, uh, what affected you, what made you laugh, what made you respond, and then uh, apply those same lessons to your own work. Uh, a couple other words, um, love and love what you do. Invest your passion into your work every day and be willing to learn more about your craft. Uh, be willing to work late hours and on weekends if that's what's required. Uh, it's your name on the work after all. So you have to be proud of that. And then finally, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to be different or stand up for your differences or your unique approach. Uh, certainly no shortage of bland and uninspired advertising out there. So if you can find a new way to reach people, create a memorable impression, represent your, your clients' brands well, uh, then, then follow that path. So those are my three. I would say don't get comfortable. I think that um, as I get super old, I, I realize that it's easy to um, like recycle ideas and keep coming back to things that have worked in the past. And that's kind of a crutch and it, and it is something that I try not to do. I fall into the trap quite a bit, but also just learning. I, I think that uh, we, we try to keep pushing and learning new techniques and technology and, and try to uh, keep pushing ourselves there so that we're not comfortable and don't always take the easy way out. Okay, great. Um, moving on, uh, next topic. Uh, there's always something, you know, the issues pop up for us as creatives, us in our, in our, in our uh, professional lives. Um, whether it's a creative block, a problem-solving struggle, you know, et cetera. How do you guys overcome roadblocks you're faced with on a daily basis? And I'll, maybe I'll ask Scott first. Um, we talk a lot about this uh, here. Uh, if you're having trouble with a specific project, just walk away for a while uh, and try to forget about it. Try to actively forget about it. Do a different type of work. And then hopefully when you come back to that project a little bit later, you'll bring a fresh energy to it, maybe a, a different perspective. It's, there's, sometimes there's just no sense in banging your head against a blank sheet of paper. You, you got to move on and try something else. Uh, and then in a broader sense, like if you're having trouble for days, weeks, or longer, um, one of the things I suggest to folks is, is just trying to expose yourself to, to different forms of creativity, uh, art, uh, unusual music that you wouldn't normally listen to, films you wouldn't typically watch, go out into nature, take a road trip, meet weird new people, whatever, you never know what's going to turn your head around and flip that switch and, and help you to unlock that creativity and help you get back on that, that horse. I would, I would agree with pretty much all of that. And I would add to it that I, I always try to tell uh, my group to use, use our team, uh, lean on our team. I mean, that's why we're here. I've, I've probably said a million times, you know, we could have all just been freelancers and we could have been fine, but we're, we're working as a team here. So let's use each other as a team. Um, and the other thing I think that I always come back to is, is to simplify the problem when you, we, you so a lot of times we get caught up making things too complex and um, and you know we're, we're not like saving people's lives here it's this is marketing so I think if we kind of back away a little bit and simplify uh, the solutions come a little easier um, for me I kind of took this um was taking this more of a <clears throat> problems, uh, business problems, as opposed to uh, maybe creative block or whatever. But, uh, and I know a lot of people are out there that are, uh, you know, individuals just like me uh, running their own thing. I think it's good. Um, and what I do is to surround myself with people that I can trust. It's like kind of a, uh, it's not really a, uh, official board, but it's, it's kind of what it is. It's just people that I can go to if I have questions, um, you know, or I'm uh, hitting a dry spot, whatever. 
Uh, I would, I would say Bill and Scott are both on that list of people that I feel like that I could call with questions. Um, I have people like my dad, who is a, a business guy in banking that I go to, uh, a lot, uh, with, with, uh, business questions, financial questions. I have a group of, uh, Christian, Christian business people that I deal with that, that, uh, I can ask questions to. And I go to my wife a lot because she's got, uh, wisdom beyond her years, I think, um, uh, for me and, and, and my business. So just kind of getting, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with uh, people that you can trust and go to and, um, and ask questions. I think it's a great thing. Very nice. Nice answers. Um, I'm going to come back to you, um, uh, Mark, on this next question, and, and then we'll open it up to, to uh, Bill and Scott. Um, what's the most exciting thing that, that you're willing to share about the industry that you've come across in the last six to 12 months? Any innovations or, um, uh, you know, uh, advancements in the technology that you've seen? Yeah, um, actually, I, I would say if you had asked me this maybe last year or the year before, I wouldn't have had much. There wasn't doesn't seem like there's been much uh, since the advent of digital audio. You know, we went from tape to digital. That was a pretty big deal. But um, this year, I've kind of been uh, become aware of the um, advancement and popularization of spatial audio, which is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I found that, uh, you know, studios, uh, whatever, experimented with this in back in the 70s with quad, four speakers around, and people tried to get that to work, and it didn't really go uh yeah we did kind of go uh with uh you know 5.1 surround sound and stuff like that uh but that was only kind of for movies and um and people that had it set up uh you know in their house you know and and that's not the majority of people but with the spatial audio now found on an iphone and and maybe in your car audio is coming in soon is what i understand it's kind of changed the whole perspective of how things can be done. Uh, you know, you can take uh, a person, uh, you know, our perspective before was you're sitting here and then you have two speakers in front of you and that's, that's your perspective. Well, now you can change your perspective since spatial audio is all around you. Uh, you know, this person could be sitting in the middle, on the side, over, up top, on the bottom, uh, just, Everything's, everything's up in the air now for creativity. And uh, I'm curious to see now, and I haven't seen it really break in big to the broadcasting end of it, radio or TV, but I think that's coming. And I think that's, uh, you know, something that I've been trying to at least get, wrap my head around, uh, for lack of a better term, and, uh, and get to know it a little bit so we can kind of move forward in that, that area. So it's, it's really fun. Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. Could, could this be set up with quad? <laughs> Absolutely. I would say uh, QR codes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think um, this isn't like a technical thing and it's, it's, more, it's more about Madhouse in the last couple years. But I think the thing that I'm excited about is the work that our group is doing to try to diversify um, our staff and try to be uh, more open and have um, more people from different backgrounds. And, and we've started a, an internship program, if you will, where we're reaching out to um, more schools than just the easy schools that are around here. And we're, um, Liz has, has been heading this up and, and got a, a hold of a lot of um, a lot of colleges around the country and we're just seeing a lot of talented um, diverse applicants and it's it's exciting because it's always been difficult for us to to get those types of applications and we're super white and we want to be more diverse and we just got to take steps and i think we're doing that that's what's exciting about it uh we got a new fax machine last week, so we're pretty pumped about that. Uh, but the, the, the exciting thing about the industry in general, I suppose, is, is uh, maybe just that we're all still here, <laughs> or most of us are anyway, and that we've, we've 
coming, we've come through this or are coming through this whole situation and we've adapted and we've figured out how to survive in the middle of this weird thing. And it's not just marketing, but a lot of businesses. So that's, um, uh, it's, it's comforting in a way. And that's, I wrote a blog post about um, how the pandemic has really just kind of um, sped up the, the changes that are already happening anyway. Life and business and marketing are, are full of changes all the time. And maybe we don't see it because it, it moves at a slower pace, but then something like the pandemic comes along and just kind of speeds everything up or throws a rock into everything and we have to adapt very quickly. So it, it was interesting to watch people adapt, uh, anybody from restaurants to insurance companies to car dealers, how they, how they adapted and how they changed to uh, deal with the situation and get through it and get better. And a lot of that stuff is gonna stick. A lot of those changes they made are, are gonna be the, the new way of going forward. So that's kind of interesting. Very cool. I, I, I'm interested in that, that spatial audio as well, because I know when Apple started hyping that, you know, a few months ago, I was like, well, how do you have spatial audio through a set of headphones or through your phone? You know, you don't have this immersive environment. So I've always been kind of skeptical on that, but I'll take your word for it, Mark, that um, it's something to, <laughs> it's something to, uh, to look forward to. Um, what, uh, moving on to the next question, what helps you guys stay creative? And, um, you know, this kind of kind of make, goes back to the, the creative block thing, but um, what's, what helps you guys, you know, stay pumped, do your work, and where do you get inspiration these days? Um, have you, you know, been in the, in, the, in the industry for, you know, a few years? What, what keeps you going? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh Part of it for me, it's, it's, it's the same thing it's always been. It's that, that excitement that comes with making something out of nothing and making, making something that I can be proud of. And then looking forward to uh, hopefully the client's glee about the whole thing and, and, and uh, turning on their audience a little bit. So all of those are tremendous motivators for me. Um, I was thinking about an example earlier uh, we have a client who's used uh, our humor on hold for about 20 years, 20 years or more. And uh, someone who read a recent script that I had written for this client asked me, after 20 years of writing for these people, how is this thing that I'm looking at right now the funniest thing that I've ever seen for them? In other words, how do you keep cranking this stuff out for the same client and, and, and to hopefully great effect? Uh, that is a tough thing, obviously, and it's, it's a constant challenge. It's one I'm uh, um, serious about pursuing and, and uh, meeting. And when people respond to the work so positively, not that it happens all the time, but when somebody comments on that, when you can stop somebody in their tracks and say, hey, I noticed this, and it, it you know, gave me a chuckle or whatever, that's thrilling for me, thrilling. Um, coming from radio and marketing, marketing, uh, there's not a lot of direct feedback. I'm not on a stage, you know, I'm not a comedian. So uh, we don't get that instant feedback. So when anybody takes the time to say, hey, this, this touched me or this, uh, you know, turned me on in some way, uh, it's, it is just thrilling. So that's a big, a big motivator. Mark? All right. All right. Uh, for me, uh, with the creative block, I mean, I've, I've always had this weird thing. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with music libraries. We always, they're online now where you could go and, and you can, you know, go to a library and there's all kind of gen generic types of music and stuff. Uh, when I've, uh, we used to have those on CDs. So I used to go out uh, when I wouldn't, when I needed an idea and I didn't have a, you know, was having a creative block. If I went and listened, just pulled out some different CDs and it didn't matter what they were. I'd start listening to the music and, uh, you know, just the different genres and all the different types of music inside the genre would always somehow 
uh, spur me to start thinking about different things. And it, and it would, uh, that might lead to a different kind of an announcer or a different, you know, a different angle on the, uh, on the take of the spot or whatever it might be. So, uh, just for me, it's like, if I get stuck, it's, I'll pull up a, a um, you know, a, a music library on the, on the computer there and just start banging through songs. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know, stuff starts to come to my mind for one reason or another, but it just tends to be fun. It's kind of like sketching for an artist almost, right? You're just kind of feeling your way through things until you, you, you kind of work your way to that, that idea that you think will work, right? Yeah. There's sometimes, you know, your mind gets closed, you know, and it's, it's like, it's only going from here to here again. Uh, it can only be one of these two things. And then you go, well, not really. And all of a sudden, well, it could go this way or that way or the other way. It just, it just tends to open it, open my mind up. I think I spoke at length about this last year, but um, I, I tend to, um, uh, I tend to find inspiration from from things outside of design, outside of graphic design. Uh, but a, a nice little uh, example of that was this weekend. I was uh, cleaning out a Madhouse flat file, and I mean there were things in there that were 16, 17 years old, and a lot of the sketches and and drawings and and just thoughts and. Uh, just the work behind a lot of work was in there. And it was really inspiring to me to see kind of some of that process that went on. And then like, you know, oh, I need to get back to my roots a little bit. We need to, we need to do more of this. We could do more of that. So it's uh, just anywhere, anywhere but work, I think is the best place for me to find inspiration. Bill, when you, when you mentioned that, isn't it interesting to look back at old work and either say, gosh, that's horrible, or gosh, I've, which is a good thing. It shows that you've grown or you've changed or evolved or whatever. But also, uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasant surprise when you find little gems in there that are like, oh, that still holds up. Or uh, yeah. do you guys have a, a, a take on that, uh, that experience of going through old stuff? Just for that reason, not just, I mean, just to either be inspired by it or, or to say, gee, I hope I've advanced a little bit. Yeah, for, for one reason or another, I can't remember uh, what I did last week. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if somebody asked me, what have you been working on? I'm like, I don't know. I had a couple things. Anyway, I keep scripts. I've kept uh, scripts uh, for radio, TV spots and stuff like that since I started. And uh, in the same thing as you, Bill and, and Scott, you got to go through. And it's like, if I go through and look at the scripts, oh, man, look at that. Look what I did. Boy, that's a cool, that was a cool spot. Or, man, that announcer was awesome. Or we picked a great, you know, whatever it was. It was a great idea or it worked or it did that. Most of the times they're good memories, I got to say, Scott. There, there are some ones in there, though, you do kind of look at. You go, oh, glad that one got, <laughs> we, we got by with that one. But uh, again, most of it's a lot of fun. And you kind of remember, oh, man, I, yeah, I used to do work with those guys. And uh, boy, they, they were a lot of fun, you know, whatever it was. So it's really I, think cool. one of, I think one of the biggest things that, that was a takeaway for me was uh, all of the handwork that we did all of the drawing and the tracing and the, you know, copying and painting and everything. And I, I, I think about, I sit there when I'm cleaning that drawer and I think, are we too busy to do any of this stuff now? And is that, is that why we're not doing it? it and are we, are we worse for that? Should we be taking more time and doing some of this stuff? Cause it's fun too. And, and exciting to do that kind of work. You know, uh, it doesn't just apply to your own work. Uh, I mean, either of you guys, do uh, you go back and look at, uh, in Mark's case, old audio or Bill's case, old designs? I'm talking about from decades ago from other people. For instance, um, uh, Stan Freeberg is one of my heroes. And I'll go back and listen to his, some of his radio stuff and some of his TV stuff. And it's just mind-blowing to me that he was doing this stuff uh, 55 years ago, 60 years ago, and it still holds up today. And I can absolutely take lessons away from that and go, look how he did this, 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 this. And the, the spot that I always hold up as one of my favorites ever is the Sunsweet Prune spot. Uh, I don't know if any of you know that, where it's just a guy on, on screen. He's a stuffy guy and an ascot, sounds kind of British, and, you know, he's got a stuck up. 
and the Stan, the Stan Freeberg hand comes in from off screen and hands him the prunes and the guy objects to the prunes immediately. Uh, in fact, the conversation has started prior to this interview. He's already talked about how much he hates these prunes. And it's such, it's such a groundbreaking piece of work, the fact that the Freeberg actually insults the client several times throughout the spot. And this is in 1965, 67, something like that. And then the, the off-screen voice and the, uh, the fact that he, it's just brilliant. Uh, it's so remarkably simple. It's, you know, 29 and a half seconds of glory for me. So to go back and remind yourself of, gee, they did this very simply and very effectively uh, 60 years ago, um, makes you wonder, makes you hopefully get, you know, get back to those simple roots and say, this really is about a simple message. And how can I clarify that and make it simple and beautiful in its simplicity? Yeah. Nice. Um, moving on. Gentlemen, where do you see the industry in the next 10 years? And uh, what are your hopes for your respective fields and your prospective companies? And how do you, how do you see the, the Toledo creative market as a whole over the next 10 years? Uh, I, I can't, I can't even begin to try to answer that. Like I know what's, what's going on mm -hmm. but, uh, or go, or going to happen. But I mean, I think we're like Scott said earlier. Um, I think we're pretty fortunate to be in as good a shape as we are collectively. Um, I had some, as a business owner, I, I could probably speak for a lot of business owners in our industry. I was pretty nervous uh, March 2020 and didn't really know how this was going to affect us. Um, again, super fortunate. This has affected us almost in a positive way as far as being busy. Um, and uh, I, you know, I don't see our work slowing down, hopefully. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity to learn new, uh, new, new kinds of media, new design, and, and, just, and just keep growing. I can't tell you where it's going. I, it seems like our community and industry is really thriving. I mean, people are hiring, people are doing great work. It just feels like there's really good energy. As, oh. Go ahead, Mark. as far as advertising in general, my opinion is, is that uh, it'll always be around. I had some uh, guy come up to me when um, uh, streaming services got to be big and social media and stuff. It's like, yeah, I can, I can watch the TV and scroll through the commercials. What are you guys going to do? And I was like, hey, they'll figure something out. <laughs> Uh, you know, somebody's got to pay for the commercial or for the TV shows and, and the production and stuff. Uh, something will happen. And obviously it has. They'll just do it in different ways. So it's always going to be around. And I think as far as Toledo in general, I think, you know, in my opinion, Toledo's always had a real rich and strong history of, of advertising. And I think that will go uh, and continue no matter what. I think, um People from Toledo, um, just by way of being from Toledo, feel like we have to do it better and stronger than, um, you know, other people. Some people, some, you know, there's some stigma about going to Chicago or L.A. or New York to find the best stuff or you got to go there to get the, get the best product. But I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, being, being in Toledo and, and uh, there's so many creative people and so many good ideas and stuff here. And it's so strong and we're working hard and everybody works even harder, I think, to, to do a better job and, uh, than, than somebody would get by going out of town. So to me, uh, the Toledo market will always be strong. Yeah, to, to support what Mark said, I mean, uh, uh, maybe we're a little scrappier. Maybe we need to be. Maybe we're not so sexy or whatever, but um, it's, it's uh, we're the Volkswagen, you know, of uh, <laughs> referring to old ads again. But um, uh, yeah, if we can be more nimble and more flexible and, and we don't have as much to lose, perhaps uh, we, we can be, take more chances. We can challenge more norms and just be, uh, do interesting work, hopefully. And then uh, like Bill said, I, I have no idea what's gonna happen. 
in terms of uh, the next five years, 10 years. I'm not good at predicting trends. And what's going to happen is going to happen. And uh, really the only thing that any of us can do is just try to prepare for it by getting better. Uh, and so when those, when, when those changes do come, uh, you can react quickly to, to what needs to be reacted to, those legitimate changes in the industry. One, yeah, one, one other thing is Swami hat. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to add one, one more thing was that when, when we started Madhouse, I felt like we were this little young group and we were out there trying to get work. And, and I don't know when this happens to an old guy, um, but all of a sudden you, all of a sudden you turn around and you go, wait, there's like these other young talented people that are like doing this thing. And that's exciting too. That's cool to see the new, the new groups and the new freelancers and the new designers and producers and writers kind of coming up and, and, and pushing everything forward. So that's kind of, that's pretty cool to see. It's a little depressing as an old person, but it's pretty cool to see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, being old. <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens. It happens, right? Yeah. Um, can, moving on, can can uh, you guys share uh, an interesting client story or you know a lesson you've learned over your your silver medal uh, career? Or something that that you know may be humorous or something that taught you something or or just you know. Oh uh, God. <laughs> I mean, I know there's so many, right? This is trouble. <laughs> You can do it anonymously, an anonymous client, right? I'll, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm not going to answer the question. I'll tell you that this, la this last <laughs> couple of years, I was, this is what I was thinking about is that um, there's been a lot of new businesses started and we've been doing some branding work for some people that have started new things or, or re kind of realigned, rebranded what they were doing. You know, that, that I think that's pretty popular. Um, I just, I've just really found out how, difficult this is uh, to like work with a small business owner and help them name a business and rebrand a business. It's like naming their child. It's like, it's, it's really difficult. It's super fun. It's a, it's a challenge. It's, but man, it's tough. And there's been a lot of it this year. I mean, we've been fortunate to get a lot of branding work and I think our team's done a really nice job, but it's tough stuff. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, a retail client that we've had for many years. And, and years ago, I worked on the account. And it took me, uh, this, this story is kind of, uh, <laughs> I suppose, legendary here at, at our shop. But it took me a long time to earn this particular client's trust, the, the, the contact at, at this client. Uh, but eventually, I kind of did. And then after... Uh, writing for the client for a couple of years, she asked our CEO, Jerry Brown, to remove me from the account. Now I was just shocked by the whole thing because I thought I had, I thought we had a good thing going here. Turns out I had pushed her a little too hard to make what she considered a minor change in her, in her marketing. And instead of telling me about it, that she was tired of me yakking about it, uh, she just went to Jerry and said, get this guy off my account. So the lesson is my priorities were not her priorities. And that cost me a few bucks, uh, but it taught me a, a very valuable lesson. And that's is if you have a client, uh, even if you have their trust, uh, state your case once, maybe twice, and then drop it. Move on. It's not important to them uh, just because it's important to you. So uh, that's that. And I've told the story many times to hopefully prevent people from not falling into that same trap. It's a good lesson learned. I. Uh, um... I have a couple of lessons, two lessons that stick out in my head. Um, the one was in the audio industry or in the, you know, this technology stuff, it's easy to get caught up in uh, equipment and, uh, you know, the cool things to have or the good microphone, Bill, uh, the Neumann microphone, whatever it might be. But uh, the, the advice uh, was not to get caught up in the equipment because there's 
five other studios or five other people around that have the exact same equipment or similar equipment. They can do the exact same thing as you can do. But what sets you apart is if I go back to my the, the three word thing, uh, the customer service thing, the solving people's problems. If you can solve people's problems without being a pain in the ass, uh, they're going to come back to you and 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 use you. And and that's really that's really you know one of the biggest ones. Hey, you know, okay, everybody can do it, but if you can do it without being a pain. I'll come back and use you. So I've, I've taken that to heart. The other one that I that uh, he put into words, what I've always thought though is uh, managing expectations. I find that uh, even though we're in the creative or the uh, communication industry, a lot of people still don't communicate the greatest. But if you can get that, and uh, you know, if you say you're going to get it done at a certain time, to get it done at a certain time, but if you're not going to get it done at that time, just to keep me up to date, keep them up to date, uh, your client, um, let them know what's going on, why it can't be, somebody's running late, blah blah blah, whatever it may be, uh, but just let them know, you know, don't just uh, let them hang there for three days and not say anything, um, but manage their expectations in a way that's professional. So those are the two things that I, I go with. Very nice. Um, I mean, if we, finally, wanted to have, yeah. if we wanted to have like an issues and ale session somewhere and talk about, you know, some other stuff, we could. But on a, on a, on a recorded Zoom, are you kidding me? <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Finally, for the, for the last question, um, I'm going to preface this by something um, that kind of goes into this. Um, if any of you knew who, who Milton Glaser was, he was a really famous designer who died, I think it was last year. Uh, and he had done the um, I Love New York campaign and um, Brooklyn Brewery logo, if you've ever seen that. And he was part of the uh, founders of the Pushpin Group back in the 60s. Um, one of the things I, I read about him once is he said, if you can have three things in your career as a designer that you really, really think are superlative pieces of work, then you've done your job. You know, that's coming from somebody who had like a 60 year career, right? Um, so the question is, what do you consider to be the greatest success in your career so far? Do you have one, do you have two? What do you think? I'll go. I, I, have, I have one. I, I feel like um, we set out to do a thing with Madhouse and we have continued to stay the course. And I think that's been really, uh, it's been a challenge because there's been opportunity, there's been, there's been situations and challenges. And I think that, that Rob and I have um, had, a, had a vision for what we wanted and have stuck with it. And that's, I'm proud of that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, uh, reinforce what Bill said to me that it's the same thing it's very simple it's just my my greatest success I think is just that I've been able to do work that I love doing for so long uh, money is wonderful awards wonderful uh, but if you don't wake up every day looking forward to what you get to do that day and you're not excited about it uh, you know money is probably not going to fix that problem so uh, I, I, it's been surprising to me over the years, even members of my own family in recent years, I've discovered kind of went through life just doing a job. And that made me sad. It made my heart hurt to think that, that you'd spend such a huge portion of your life doing something that, did, that wasn't important to you, that didn't mean something to you, uh, and that you didn't find joy in. So, um, you know, uh, that's just it. It's just that, 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 that uh, willingness and that thrill of coming to work every day and, and getting to do it again. Yeah, I agree with uh, both of you guys. Um, uh, I always say the, the recognitions and stuff like that, the silver medal is really cool and means a ton. But uh, what really means a lot to me or what I'm most proud of is the relationships that I've made, the personal relationships. And again, uh, you know, going out to lunch with guys and Scott and Bill are, are two guys, you know, uh, one of the groups that I go out with. 
all the time and getting to know them personally. Yeah, maybe we get together for a session or on the phone on the phone and work together professionally, but you don't really get to to know each other. Uh, you get to sit down and and know about and learn about their family, and I think that's really uh, you know what they got going on in their life, good things and bad things. Um, I don't know, just getting to know people and those personal relationships are the most important thing to me. And that's really what I look at and go, that's, that's, that's successful. Oh, oh, Scott's mic is. That's there. all we have for uh, prepared questions. Um, we have, a, do have a question from the audience um, from Michael Say. He's got a question for the panelists. Um, are the glasses and goatees a requirement for silver medal consideration, or uh, does that naturally occur once you've won the award? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think maybe Michael should try it. <laughs> hey, he's got the hair. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anybody else have any questions? You can either uh, raise your hand or type it into the chat. Um, I can't believe it's been an hour. It's it's really been almost an hour now. So it, it's really uh, moved right along. Um, it goes to show the uh, the uh, <clears throat> how interesting our silver panel award winners are and what they have to say. And um, I think it's been it's, it's been a it's been an informative hour. Uh, has any anybody else anything? Um, Melissa is asking, what other interests do you have outside of work? And is have you ever had time for other interests, of course, outside of work? Of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, we, we probably wouldn't be here if we didn't have other interests outside of work, right? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I like, I like <laughs> to be outdoors. I like to hang out with my wife. I like to uh put my pajamas on immediately when i get home and sit around the house uh yeah i mean there's a ton of things oh play golf with greg reese although we tend oh to lose gosh. quite a bit we used to play golf together bill if i remember but it's been a oh, while man it's been too long uh you, anyway you won uh, the silver medal and then we can't do that anymore <laughs> my uh my interests are i love uh, like like bill outdoors uh vacations with the family stuff like that uh fishing is a big thing for me as is uh playing guitar i play in a praise band and stuff and and do that and that's really something i i have always enjoyed yeah music is a big thing for me too um Love it. I love uh, traveling whenever I can. I love going down to the mountains. That's uh, just such a beautiful place to be in. And uh, we have a new uh, grandbaby, actually. So Amy and I do. So uh, he's about 10 months old, nine and a half months old. So that takes up some time these days. And it's just, it's just a complete joy. Um, and uh, those are some of the big things. Love working in my yard. Uh, Scott's, a, Scott's a bluegrass uh, aficionado, if I... Mm -hmm. nobody cares but it's true it's, it's a music genre that sends people a running to the hills uh beth wilkerson is asking she says i've always admired the gusto it takes to leave a steady job and start your own business what inspired you to take the leap of faith to start your own firm uh my my dad was an entrepreneur and started his own business. So it was kind of, um, I don't know, it felt like it was natural to me. Um, and I would also add to that um, an amount of maybe stupidity to, I mean, I think back at starting the business and I think I don't even know if I do it at this, you know, like if what I know now, I don't even know if I would do it. I don't know if I would have the guts. I think you have to, I have, you really have to take a leap. You have to plan. Um, but my dad was an inspiration to me and uh, I saw him do it his whole life. I got to say the same thing. I'm, my dad was the inspiration because he had worked with many businesses of people that had done that. And uh, he said he kept 
tried for 10 years trying to get me because I did work at a different studio for for 17 years prior to starting uh, Level 2. And um, it was more of a family thing for me. Um, audio business isn't known for, you know, getting rich in the audio business. So especially if you're working for somebody, you know, I wasn't going to make all that much, much money. And I wasn't making all that much money. Uh, so it was one of those questions posed to you, you know, hey, if you want to do maybe do a little bit better, I was building a, a clientele and stuff like that and and building my chops there which I owe a great deal uh, to Jim Thompson who was the owner of that business um, but it was a natural progression for me and just uh, you know to to kind of get out there and do it and again like Bill said you do look back and I go I start sweating if I start thinking about what I went through uh, when we first did it and uh, you know I had two kids uh, five and three and my wife, though, gave me the back and she says, just go do it. You got to do it. Go do it. Get it done. I'll support you. And that was really one of the biggest things for me. I mean, that was that was huge. Man, when you just said your kids were five and three, that I can't believe that. Ryan's what, 23? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, ew. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So kudos mm -hmm. to uh, my wife, Michelle. <laughs> Well, if that's it from the crowd who are watching, um, I think we, we can about wrap this up here. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us, especially our three Silver Medal Award winners. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules for today. Um, Carrie, do you have uh, announcements of what, what's happening with the Ad Club over the next couple of months? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Just uh, first of all, thanks to all of our Silver Medal winners um thank you for all the knowledge and uh your amazing insights um just a quick quick note to pass along um for upcoming events um in february our coffee with creative will be putting in the work how creatives are making dei happen um that'll be on february 10th at 9 30 hosted by melissa weirman and valerie thompson um, <clears throat> so be on the lookout for that discussion, um, on the AAF Toledo website. And then Scott, I believe you wanted to, uh, talk about the Addy Awards. Yeah. Uh, March 10th, um, be on the lookout for a link coming soon. Uh, we're going to take the Addy Awards, unfortunately, virtual again this year. We thought we had a chance to sneak in there under the wire and do a live show, but because of everything that's happened, we decided as a, as a board to, to take it virtual. And I think it worked very well last year, and I think it's going to work great again this year. We did get some more um, entries this year than we did last year, so um, people are getting used to entering stuff virtually. So um, keep an eye out for for um, uh, a streaming link coming soon to a computer near you for the virtual show, which will be March 10th. Uh, it's a Thursday. Um, so we look forward to, um, you know, you guys viewing that and uh, good luck to all who have entered. We're in the final stages of judging right now. So um, like I said, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the big thing from the Addies this year. Uh, unfortunately, it's virtual, but uh, we do what we do. So thank you all. Um, thank you to Bill, Scott, and Mark again. Um, if that's it, uh, we'll call it a day. Thank you, everyone.